No veteran should have to fill out a 23-page claim to get care or wait months, even years, to get an appointment at the VA. Any misconduct, whether it's allegations of VA staff covering up long wait times or cooking the books, I will not stand for it. President Obama then and now talking about problems at the VA. Let's bring in the roundtable, former senior White House advisor David Pluff, Republican strategist Anna Navarro, GOP pollster and Daily Beast contributor Kristen Soltis Anderson, and ABC's Matthew Dowd. Welcome to everybody. Matt, I want to start with you. I know this is personal for you. Your two brothers and your son are veterans. Did the president handle this correctly? Well, I, I, I thought throughout this that there's a quote by Dostoevsky that says the degree to civilization in our society can be judged by entering our prisons. And I think I'd like to update that. I think the degree of compassion and civilization in our society should be judged by how we deal with veterans and the folks that come back with injuries and from war in, in, in all of this. I think the president, I think he has good intentions. I think his intentions have been good, and I think he's done some improvements in all this. But the way veterans are treated today in this country is unconscionable. If you think about it, the unemployment rate is higher than the national average among veterans. That we have a health care problem, obviously, in the course of this in the in the course of this investigation. And now we also have homeless. The number of veterans, the thousands of veterans that are homeless in this country. I think that if you look at this and take a broad perspective on this, you take a take a look at this first. The number one thing is is we got to quit fighting long wars that seem without end. That's what's driving a huge part of this problem that we have here. We've been now in a war longer than 10 years that's driving this problem. The other thing is, is there's some things the government doesn't do well and efficiently. And one of those, I think, as we've learned over the last 30 or 40 years, the VA system has never been efficient and never been and fully And that goes effective. back a very long way. But let's talk about how the president has handled this. It took him almost four weeks to come out and say anything really about this. Right. Why? And was that the wrong thing to do? No, I don't think so. I think members of the administration have spoke to this. I, I want to pick up on something Matt said. There have been a lot of improvements. I mean, the president talked a lot about this in 08. I was on the campaign trail with him. And if you look at the effort with the private sector to hire... And, and, and they keep talking about right. those improvements, but, but this, that's is, the whole this story. is something... Right. It's not the whole story. There's, right. there's, there's 40 people who allegedly died during waiting for care. Now, the president the other day said he didn't know whether there was a link between that. The IG said maybe not. But, but shouldn't the president have been out there sooner? No, I don't think so. And I think what's important now, because, no, Martha, the whole story is important. If you look at satisfaction, by the way, of veterans of the VA, it's high. Ranked Once most. they get in there. Right. Well, but in a lot of places, they are. So we have to look at what happened in Phoenix. If there's other places where this is happening, there's going to be a thorough investigation. I think the question really is, do you have confidence in the leadership, not just in terms of what happened previously, but the fix is going forward. But I think Matthew raises other broad points about how we treat veterans. One of the great things is to see our private sector companies step up, working with the president and the first lady. They've hired almost a million veterans. This is what we need to do in this country. Anna, should uh, Shinseki resign? I think Shinseki should resign or he should be fired. I think one of the problems that uh, President Obama has of this is that there doesn't seem to be any urgency and any action that's being immediately taken, and people are frustrated. This is not a scandal that involves political conspiracy. This is a scandal that touches all of us. You're seeing Democrats come out and call for Shinseki's resignation. You're seeing Democrats come out and be critical. And it's a very difficult political problem for the president, because he was a member of the Veteran Affairs Committee in the Senate, because he made it a big focus of the 2008 campaign. He knew there were problems. And when you take a look at it, it's a problem of incompetence. It's a problem of being asleep at the wheel. It's a problem of lack of leadership and governance. So, yes, it's a big problem that falls well, right well, on his lap. I, but, let me, let me right. go to you. Yeah, I think that this can't just be where the president has words. I think there needs to be actions. And in this case, this isn't just some, you know, it's a favorite Washington game. Something goes wrong. Somebody's, you know, heads have to roll in order to make it all right. And this is a sort of a structural problem within the VA that is ensuring that incentives are misaligned so people believe that making secret wait lists is, is okay and is the right thing to do. I mean, structurally, what reforms can you make to the VA to ensure that this happens again? And I think that goes far beyond just sort of a musical chairs of personnel in Washington. John, John Boehner floated the idea of privatizing. The VA is that an option? Well, do you think? I, I, no. I think what well, I think what they have to do is they have to have some 
better hybrid thing. Obviously, veterans, there's a specific injuries that, and the reason why the VA was created, because there's specific injuries that can only be done, dealt with specifically by certain types of health care. But there should be some hybrid system where veterans don't have to wait in line. And my brother, my older brother, who was in the Coast Guard for 22 years, he actually, he likes the service he gets when he goes to the VA. The Which problem, is what I was saying to David. The True. problem is he has to wait too long there, to get There was in. a very oh. interesting piece in the New York Times yesterday by the whistleblower, in this case, uh, Sam Foote, a doctor who worked at the VA for 24 years, and that's precisely what he's recommending, a hybrid type of system. And that's who I would like, by the way, to be involved in an investigation is, of the is, VA. Uh, the guy who, who has who been writing letters very, very for years, quickly, well, not the same quickly, VA right. itself. First of all, I think, and the VA is using data and technology. They clearly can use more. There ought to be a dashboard here so you can see at a moment's notice everything that's happening through the whole system. But listen, I think there's no doubt. I think most people would agree the VA needs more funding given all the people coming out of these wars. This Republican Congress won't fund that. They'll fund tax breaks for oil companies. They won't fund this, this also our veterans. Seems a problem with David, you with know it's a political say, problem okay, when, when you lost Charlie Crest. That guy doesn't read anything other than polls. <laughs> well. Okay, thanks to you all.